I'm an astronomer and so and from the University of Massachusetts. And now also I'm a visiting professor at the uh, Catholic uh, here in yeah, San San Diego. And so I what I do is try to understand how universe works. Okay. And so <laughs> when of the research Sorry, here that's a little problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So Sorry, one of yeah. my uh, research fields is to study the center of our galaxy, which contains a supermassive black hole. Have you heard about that? Could you play a movie right here? Uh, just click somewhere. Yeah, that. Hopefully it will work. So how do we know this black hole in the center of our galaxy? So the idea is very, very simple. Because this is animation based on the real observations of how stars move from the center. There's not, nothing there, visibly, but uh, you can see stars moving around, kind of orbits. The same method as how we figured out the mass of the sun based on the motion of the planets. The same idea, very, very simple. 500 years ago, people figured out that out. The same technique was used to figure out how much mass at the very center of the galaxy. Okay, so that's based on the motion of the stars, the orbital motion. Okay, so what I do is uh, to observe the, uh, the center of our, of our galaxy, which is kind of difficult in a sense because we are looking through the smog of materials in the disk of our galaxy. Our disk galaxy like a, 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 a plate. And a lot of smart, a lot of dust, a lot of more molecules, a lot of atoms, just a lot of things uh, around. So we have to look it through. So you visibly cannot see the center of our gap at all. So you have to rely on radiations in the uh, say X ray, uh, radiation in the infrared, in the, in, in, in the uh, millimeter, in the radio. Okay, so that's kind of the multi wavelength observation. We cannot bring the center to our lab. Cannot analyze that way. Mm -hmm. So we kind of can kind of observe how things happen at the center of our galaxy. This is actually the image I produced many years ago, showing here basically the uh, kind of false color image. The so blue traces the X ray radiation, and the kind of purple color traces the uh, near infrared radiation. And then see a lot of stars. There's a lot of young stars forming around the black hole. Okay, so, so it's a whole mystery we understand how stars can form in around black holes and how the black hole works. Our well, black hole is not very active, not producing a huge amount of radiation. But still, like, a, like eating something like a hot food, so very inefficiently, so not producing a huge amount of radiation. But uh, because very close nearby, because they're at our center of the galaxy, so we still can see some radiation. Okay, so that's, uh, I'll explain a little more. So my expertise is mostly on the uh, observation side. I have a huge collection of data, and I also know how to analyze them. And so I, so my project here for the Fulbright program is to combine my expertise in observations with local expertise here, at, here at the Catholic, and for computer, computational simulations to see how theory mm -hmm. Simulation can match observations, therefore reach a better understanding how the center of our galaxy works. Okay, so that's our idea. Okay. Um, so, so that's basically from the, orb, uh, the orbital motion, we figured out this uh, uh, black hole with a mass of about 4 million suns, a huge amount of mass, within the size of less than solar system. Yeah, so we have big feed out there. So, so nothing, uh, if, if not black hole, something more exotic would be. <laughs> okay, that, okay, so that's black hole is simplest explanation. Okay, so why I'm here in Chile, Chile. And uh, this is really the capital of world uh, ground-based observations. Okay, and furthermore, the center of our galaxy is right here. On top of it, if you look from the Hawaii or near the horizon, it's a lot more difficult to observe. Here, actually, it's, if the season is right, it's right above your head. Okay, so you can see the center of our, our galaxy very clearly, directly, and also the observing condition here at at the Kama Desert 
is, is probably the world's more, the best observing site. So it's the, the high and dry, you know, the sky is clear. And so about a half or more than half of the world's largest telescopes are here in, the, uh, in Chile. So it's the capital of the ground-based observations. My specialty is mostly in space space. I work with NASA. So I have collections of data, not only from the ground-based telescopes, but also from satellites. So here I'm here working with uh, uh, a group uh, uh, led by uh, uh, Jorge Quadra at a campus, uh, uh, a Catholic campus at uh, what's it, uh, San Jordan. Yeah, San Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, OK. So this is uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Jorge and with his group. And it's actually, the, uh, Chris Russell actually also came from uh, US. Actually, we work together as a postdoc here. So we previously already been collaborating and publishing papers. So all started about like uh, five years ago when I was actually visiting uh, University of Cambridge in England. So I was on sabbatical there. So we both, uh, uh, Jorge and, uh, and, and I were uh, members of a, a big international collaborations on the study, X-ray study of the center. So we accumulated like something more than a month of satellite time and like three million seconds. This is one of the biggest project ever in the, in, in the X-ray community to observe, because center, our center is very faint. So what we did actually is to first time we had a very nice image of the black hole. Black hole does not, by definition, does not emit anything. So you only see the material falling towards this deep potential again. So here, the matter falling towards deep potential uh, and convert the potential energy into the heat. Now, the heat is, you know, we're talking about tens of a million degrees. Uh, so that kind of gas will emit X-ray radiation. That's what we see. Not only see this image, but we also see the spectrum. We see that these are really highly ionized ions. Okay, this is like a, this is like a helium like iron. Okay, this is also hydrogen like iron. So, based on the ratios of these uh, uh, different emission lines, we can figure out what's the temperature distribution of the matter falling towards the black hole. Okay, but temperature becomes higher and higher, getting deeper and deeper into the potential. That's a basic idea. So, that gave us the idea. So, we reached the conclusion is that 99% of the initially captured gravitational captured by gra the supermassive black hole actually was, will be uh, uh, ejected on the way out. So this, I, my analogy is that so these particles of uh, gas is made of particles. As so one percent of particles, unlike the Wall Street guys, will sacrifice their life into the black holes, releasing energy, kicking the rest of the energy, 99% of them, out, liberate them. Okay, that's how basically we figured out. So the paper was published in Science. Uh, 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 it's my first time in studying black hole uh, here. Okay, so that's a really strong conclusion. How basically a supermassive black hole in such a condition, eating kind of hard food, but uh, very inefficiently, only one percent getting into the black hole, and liberating ninety nine percent of matter into the space. And then, of course, this natural conclusion, this, this ejection of material carries a lot of energy as well, which potentially will affect how the environment work. I mean, uh, change the environment. Even maybe the nuclear environment that's at the center, potentially on the galaxy scales. So that's the whole basically, not only about the black hole itself, it's about how the galaxy works, OK? So, because we know there are billions of galaxies in the universe, more, uh, tens of hundreds of billions of galaxies, so, uh, so each of major galaxies will contain supermassive black holes. Okay, so this is core evolution of black holes when galaxies have been a hot topic, how they actually work. Uh, so the key point is this kind of ejection for the feedback from black holes. So black hole is the most efficient energy source, you think about it. Actually, probably you know that uh, Einstein's equation E equal to mc squared. Here, m is mass. Okay, c is the speed of light. 
speed of light is very large. So little bit, little, little bit of mass will produce a huge amount of energy. The nuclear bomb that uses only less than 1% of energy, the mass. So the black hole can use up to some 10% of less mass energy. That's huge. So if you can ever produce a black hole in the lab, you, you can feed just a little bit of garbage into it. It'll produce a huge amount of energy. Okay, so this ultimate source, okay, is a black hole. Okay, black hole is the most efficient energy source in the universe. Okay, so how the, uh, the black hole produces it. So here, a whole case, and we, so since then, about five years ago, we collaborated together, looked at this science paper, then we start to work on the actual simulations. So this is a whole case work. So most I provide data to compare with. Okay, so this is one of the simulations because the source of the hot food comes from actually from stars, young stars. Well, we don't know how they form, but these young stars emit a lot of things, eject a lot of materials because they are very, very hot. Okay, so they so they call stellar winds. So stellar winds producing by the individual stars. These are not black holes, by the way. So this is just a tracing stars. Okay, because you cannot resolve in a computer. Okay, so they just emit a lot of really uh, winds. Winds just collide with each other at the speed of like thousands of kilometers per second. Okay, so producing uh, very hot winds. So black hole is surrounded by this very hot wind. So black hole is equating gravitationally attracting this material from the wind, getting into the black hole. Okay, black hole still have a huge mass, can capture a lot from still mass. So this is the first attempt to realistically, because these are based on real orbits of the stars we have observed, and then to uh, uh, simulate collisions, have the black holes have mass down there, how the queen matter. So we can qualitatively, we reach a kind of a reasonable match between simulation and the uh, observation. But uh, since a lot more complicated than that, okay? So this actually is a uh, uh, glass center on much larger scales I produced many years. So this, by the way, is a collection, and a press release uh, years ago by NASA, which has become part of a museum collection worldwide. If you go to a museum, sometimes you can see the, these pictures. Okay. So this is, again, the blue is X-ray radiation and, uh, uh, from Chandra. Chandra is like a Hubble, works in the X-ray. So probably you heard about Hubble. So Hubble actually works in the visible light. Here, I use it for the near-infrared radiation, you can see. And space is another NASA great observatories. So these are three NASA great observatories. So I use them that all together to produce this, this image. So this is how so the black hole is right here in center. I say it's a kind of a donut shaped materials around. And then you see a lot of star formation around. So it's a kind of mess. So this is kind of ecosystem, I, I say. So how this ecosystem works, we don't know. So this is a really, I uh, use this as a laboratory to study um, how the centers of galaxies work in other parts of the other galaxies. Because it's so close. We live with something like uh, uh, 30,000 light years away from the center, fortunately. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 so our solar system is like that. So you think about it. Just, this is very tricky. It's a black hole, it's a event horizon, within which light cannot escape. This means nothing can ex escape, okay? So then, then uh, people are still try to image the, the real black hole, okay? It's a shadow, okay? it's a kind of shadow against the light around, okay? So that's the way to figure out the true black hole. Uh, so the event horizon, still people are now is, uh, is trying to do that. So black hole at the size is very, very small, just like solar system, less than solar system. As its size, so this is so. If you black hole is size of kind of U.S. coin, okay, what size of galaxy you can think? The size of galaxy will be like whole globe, okay. So the, so now we know there's a good connection between the two. This small size affects everything, globe. So this uh, we see that the mass correlation. The so biggest galaxies in general, the biggest black holes are. So this is how this works, and we don't know. 
Okay. So, but, but the, with the idea is there's a feedback. So, the black hole form in a way affects the environment. So, you're getting to the black holes now is not a one way process, not a matter of falling to black hole. The least huge amount of energy affects the evolution of formation of galaxies. That's the idea. So, so here, because it's so close, the next black hole will be something like one time, 100 times more distant. So, much more difficult to observe. So here, we can observe all the way from event horizon of the black hole. We still try to do that, still based on simulations. It's called the, this, 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 this is called the uh, event horizon telescope. Okay? Uh, now, they already got that. Now, this, the data processing is still ongoing. They try to figure out what is the, the rich the shadow like that. Okay? So this is uh, tiny scales, uh, size smaller than our solar system. This is on uh, bigger scales, so the black hole is right there. So you see the donut shaped uh, materials, it's like a spiral, so try getting into the black holes, but not getting into there, <laughs> and by forming stars. And then you see that this extra energy, you see the outflows of materials. So this is from my work years ago. And then these are much larger scales, almost like a galaxy scales. You see it kind of bipolar outflows, kind of indication for things coming out from the center. This is in the gamma radiations. Okay, this is again on a larger scales than that. So this is image on uh, these scales, and this is a real uh, galaxy scales. You see things moving into the halos of our galaxy. So this the connection is obvious, but I don't know how it happens. Okay, so that's uh, so this is order on the ten orders of magnitude. I mean, effect for ten one when ten zeros kind of scale. So from the smallest to largest scales, we we kind of have the that on all scales. So that is kind of uh, my kind of my work, you know, try to synthesize everything together, combine with the simulations, try to figure things how things work. So key questions we want to answer like that. So can the simulation produce the observed structures and energetics? The whether this kind of energy output, or how the energy output affects the ecosystem of the galaxy? Especially in nuclear environment, and how whether at this kind of activities go cycles, what kind of time scales we are talking about? Every one million years also, or every ten, a thousand years also? Okay, this evidence seems to change with time. Okay. So, what are specifically what I intend to do here? Not only about science, but uh, first is strength of our existing collaboration on study of glass center. So, so. Here, the expertise is mostly uh, so far on the theoretical side. Uh, and uh, and uh, this, uh, it was such a nice place to observe glass center. Okay, so uh, we we'll try to develop a community, real not observation, not especially ground based telescopes. I, my specialty is on space studies. And so, combined, really, they have state of art access, preferred access to the uh, telescope time. Uh, to observe, so that's one thing. The second thing is to develop new collaborations, not only in the Catholic but also other universities, and uh, and uh, the training new uh, generation of scholars, especially graduate students and the postdocs, uh, to further the studies, and then uh, do some outreach and uh, to uh, I probably gave a talk, hopefully in downtown somewhere here, and about this kind of. I think about exciting science on the black holes, which is always a good topic. It's for, for kids, especially. <laughs> you know? So that's uh, basically what I do. And uh, thank you very much, on, uh, of course, for my uh, program, but also uh, kind of international academic uh, outreach uh, networking program in, at the Catholic. Thank you very much. We're a little short on time. We have time for one question. Yeah. Sorry. And then we're at lunch. Yes. Why, all the time you look at the galaxy, it's always shown as a planar. Type. Yeah. Ah. Why is it not a cloud? A Why is that a sphere? Globe or cloud? Oh, oh, because it's this angular momentum. So everything is falling toward. It's a very good question. So things formed because the interaction between different clouds, you can get a shear. Okay. You have some kick. So this is getting like a water, you pour the water into sink. 
so water goes like spirals get in, right? So you have to lose the angular momentum first before getting into the center. So if everything just face north is side motion, everything will fall into the black holes, right? It's a side mo motion actually saved us from reaching, getting into the black hole. Because I was always thinking, why can't you have the centrifugal force in multiple planes? That's all. Yeah, but uh, so it's always a net angular moment. In eventually, yes, in some other direction, it's a, it's a, it will, will cancel each other. But there's some net uh, angular moment left, so which forms a preferred direction of the, uh, the motion. I've always wondered that. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you again, sure. Dr. Wong. Thank you so much.